Hello, creative coders. Today, we dive into animation with 3JS and TweenJS. We'll start with a basic scene, then step-by-step, step, we'll add shapes and apply animations to create artworks that come to life. So whether you're an experienced developer or just getting started, this tutorial will equip you with the tools and techniques to bring your creations to the next level. Let's get started. Here's our basic template instantiating our scene, our camera, and our renderer. Also adding the orbit controls in here. And we drop a cube in just to see something in our scene as well as a nice background gradient, like so. Here's our animate method, which we call and then recall every available frame. We're gonna do this in four additional steps. We're gonna add a method so that we'll, this box will tween, it'll scale up and scale down. We'll create a reusable function that wraps that functionality of the tweening and the cube so that we can create a group of cubes. That group will not only contain all of the cubes, but it'll also trigger the tweening. After we've created a simple collage, then the fun begins. We start to tweak the look and feel, the color. First thing I wanna do is add that tween functionality. I've already imported my tween library. I need to, in my animate method, add this tween.update. Now I can use the tween. And the first thing I want to do is write that tween method. Let's say function tween scale. And I'm going to pass should scale up. And the goal scale will be either whatever the cube scale is, or zero. And we'll use that goal scale here, here, and here. This is our the duration of our tween. We'll leave it at 1,000 for now. I also want to call this scale tween, <clears throat> so it's more clear. Great. This easing method, I want to be elastic out. This might seem kind of cryptic, so what I recommend is go to check out this page here on the TweenJS documentation that shows you, if I reload it, you can see them all in motion. It shows you kind of what to expect from that easing method. So now we have a scale tween function. I want to add a start method. Cube.userData. Oh, that's, that's what I want. That's exactly what I want. The user data is an empty object. I've defined it here and I'm adding a, a prop, a method that's just gonna trigger that tween scale true. Now, if I were to just call that, let's first comment this out and just check if we have any errors. Nope, let's call that method. So cube.userData.start and nothing happens. Was there, was there an error? Cube scale is not defined. Oh, my bad. Const cube scale equals, how about 0 0.5? Okay, so nothing happened. Our initial scale is one. So tweening, oh, that should work actually. Hang on, let's see if there's any errors. I don't see any errors. Nope. Um, let's try again. I'm going to set the initial scale of the cube to zero. And now it doesn't scale up. Oh, I'm calling it infinite times. That's bad. Instead of doing that, I want to say, actually, just call it once. Um, let next time equal a half a second, 500 milliseconds, and we'll say const interval equals some really large number. Um, and we'll add an if statement to our animate loop and say, hey, if time is greater than next time, then do this, 
call the start method and increment your next time property so it doesn't get called again. Time equals zero. And get rid of this and go. Hey, see that? Isn't that nice? Now our cube tweens on. Uh, what are you telling me? Oh, I see. It's too large. Is that better? Okay. Thank you. What if it were to tween on and then tween off again? I think that would be cool, don't you? So you can add an onComplete method. And in that onComplete method, I'll say, hey, if you are, hang on. If you just finished tweening up, go ahead and tween down. Like that. Uh, is that how I wanted to do it? No. One more curly brace and then close paren. Let's see how that goes. Tweens up, tweens down again. Isn't that nice? So using the onComplete method to achieve that goal. We can also let it stay alive a little bit longer. Const delay equals should scale up zero. Otherwise, 1,000 milliseconds and add this delay method. So now it'll scale up. It'll wait around for 1,000 milliseconds and scale down. Okay. Just to really see that working. Change it to three. So now it really hangs out a while and then goes away. Yeah, I'm going to change it back to 1,000. We've got our tween working, tweening in and out. Now we're going to create a bunch of these cubes that tween in and out. I'm going to change this. Um, I'm going to get rid of this and say cube group dot user data dot update. And I'm going to pass in the time like so. And now I'll define that cube group up here right above my cube method. Cube group is a new group and scene, hang on a second, scene dot add cube group. And now I'm gonna add my cube to the cube group to keep it tidy. All right, and now I wanna give my cube group an update method. Cube group dot user data dot update equals function blah 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 and here's that code that says hang on near that oh yeah let's grab that up that next time in interval from now we don't need it down here anymore up here next time so <clears throat> if the time exceeds the next time Start, boom. So great. There's really no visual difference, but the code is organized so that we are now set up to create a bunch of cubes. Let's do that. Instead of this start thing, let's do, um, yeah, cube equals, hang on a second, that's really messy. I'm just gonna say get cube, all right? And, and I don't think I need to, well, I do need to add it to something, to the scene graph. So let's add that here, cube group dot add cube. And if I save it, it's not gonna work. There's no, there's no get cube method yet. Let's just wrap this block of code here where we define the material and the mesh and that tween method. All, we're going to wrap all of that in a function, like so. Function get cube. And format. I typed shift option F to format on my Mac keyboard. Great. Now we have a get cube method, but it doesn't return anything. And it's going to be mad because, hey, you didn't give me anything. <laughs> so in the getCube method, I want to return 
the cube that we just created. And it still doesn't work because, because why? Why doesn't it work? Cube is not defined. Oh, because I'm still calling it down here. Sorry. So this should work. It's creating a bunch of, I think it's creating a bunch of guys on top of each other. Nope. What we need to do is randomize the position, uh, maybe the scale, also maybe the rotation of each of those cubes so that we see all of them as we're creating a bunch of these things. I'm gonna reduce this interval down to 1000 so we see a new one each second. And I wanna write a new helper function, helper function called function transform mesh. And then you pass in a mesh. And it's gonna handle, um, I'm gonna set the initial scale to zero. I'm also gonna set the position to random, random, random. Thank you. I'm also going to normalize that random position and randomly rotate on the y-axis too. I'm gonna take a second, just, just, uh, just so we can see what it looks like. It doesn't look like anything yet because I didn't call it. Let's call it real quick. Transform mesh cube. Now they should be popping up in different places. Let's speed up the frequency here. So they're all kind of clustered together there. I'm gonna use this normalize method to, to spread them out a little more. Um, they'll spread them out at least um, somewhere between 0 0.75 and four. So now they're more spread out. And they're spread out in a shape that's described by a sphere instead of just bunched together like a cube. You know, we're pretty much done. From here on out, it's just kind of uh, refining the look and adding some nice details. <clears throat> Let's do that real quick. We're gonna change the look of the material to a mesh basic material. So it's, now it's flat shaded yellow. In fact, I wanna get rid of these directives and it's a richer yellow. Now that these flat shapes are tweening on and off, I kinda wanna rotate them randomly too. Yeah. And they're popping on and off. And let's add a const inner cube is equal to a new three dot mesh, but this is the a different material. It's an inner material. And let's define that const inner material. All right, inner color is equal to blue and then the inner material is a mesh basic material with that inner color. And then we add cube dot add inner cube. What does that look like? Not much. Let's scale the inner cube down a little bit inner cube dot set scalar so now it's one eighth as big as the yellow one but we can't see it the yellow one covers it up here's a fun way to get an outline is just to change the side so it, by default geometry has normals which face out and there you then you can see it normals are a computer graphics construct to allow you to create meshes and see them but if we reverse the normals so they're facing inward what you're seeing is the back side only. So no matter how I rotate this, those yellow boxes provide a outline for the blue boxes. Isn't that cool? I think it's super cool. I think that's all we have time for today. What I encourage you to do is experiment with tweening different properties like rotation, for example. Um, I wonder if I just copy this and make it into, uh, whoops. Rote tween, and that's the rotation. And the, instead of goal scale, we'll do, ugh. Let's do this. Instead of, see, goal rote. And we'll just define goal wrote here, const goal wrote new three 
dot vector three. I just want to randomize it. Dot random. I think that's going to work. Let's have a look. Oh, it works. Do you see them kind of spinning on and off? I love it. I love it. Let's get rid of the rotation and the transform thing. We don't need this anymore. So now they rotate on too. Woo. Add a color palette. Coolers.co has a bunch of color palettes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Explore trending palettes. Just grab one, any, any one of these. Do, 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 do. How about, not that one. How about this one looks interesting. Open palette. I like to grab the hex and go back to my scene. Here we go. <clears throat> Excuse me, above the get cube method, I'll define a pa actually no, above the geometry. Const palette, shoot, misspelled it. And it's an empty array. Start the first, um, oh no, what do I do? Did I lose it? No, I didn't lose it. And then select, a, a control, sorry, option D to select those dashes comma zero x for the literals and now for the color inside of get cube i'm going to define a color guy here whoops const color equals a random color in that palette and copy this come down to the inner mesh where are you inner mesh here you are now the inner color like so there you go thanks so much for coming by um i love creating these so your support really helps um you can find a link to my patreon in my youtube page and uh any any little bit helps um but leave a comment below with your suggestions or any questions you might have like and subscribe and i'll see you next time thanks bye